Um, surreal. I can't quite believe it. It hasn't sunk in yet. And it's probably one of those things that probably never will. Um, I'll just look back in maybe about hopefully 50 years time or something and just be like, wow, I can't believe I did that. So um, it sounds really good. It's such a cool opportunity. And I'm just so amazed that I've managed to achieve that. <laughs> Yeah, being the first black woman to represent uh, Team GB in a swimming event is something that I, it's kind of like a bittersweet for me. Um, I kind of wish it wasn't me just because I wish it wasn't a problem or an issue that black people aren't as involved in swimming as they could slash should be. But at the same time, it's so cool to be part of history, part of breaking down a barrier which has stood for so long. and. Um, yeah, I really hope that people see me and think, OK, if she can swim, I can swim. <laughs> um, I'm just happy that I've helped break a barrier. I'm, help I'm helping by using my voice to advocate for just people to get in swimming, because swimming is such a cool sport, um, even as a life skill, even as an activity. I think everybody should be able to swim 25 metres. So hopefully, within the next few years, we'll start to see a domino effect of more people getting into swimming, adults, children, it's, it's available and open to everybody. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, it's kind of like a wake up call I've had over the past few years where I just viewed swimming as a sport. I never really looked at it as an activity or even more like based than that, a life skill. And um, since working with the Black Swimming Association and getting to know different stories, I've realized that swimming just 25 meters is just as important as you know, being an elite swimmer, being an Olympian, being an Olympic gold medalist, because they're, they're all important stories that like, it's, it's just getting in and doing something that you wouldn't have done before. So um, yeah, I just, I really hope people like pick up like, swimming lessons or going to a club or joining the elite level, whatever that is. Um, I just want people to be aware that it is open to them. Um, yeah, it sounds amazing to be qualified for the Tokyo Olympic Games. It's just, it's so surreal. It's not quite a dream come true because I never really dreamt it because I never thought it possible. So um, to achieve something beyond my like, wildest dreams is just um, an amazing feeling. And yeah, I'm still waiting for it to sink in. <laughs> my aims to Tokyo are just to train right, right now, train as hard as I can, have no regrets in the pool, and then get to the race venue, get to the competition, and just fulfill my potential. Um, I've, I'm aiming for a minimum of top 10, because I think if I execute my race plan as I should, and as it, like, it should work out in, in that kind of like, setting. So um, yeah, it's just, it's so difficult, because there's so many incredible women that I'm racing against, and with open water, it's so dynamic. Like it's two hours of racing. You never know what can happen within it because there's so many different variables. So um, yeah, it's always one of those things. You never know how it's going to go until you get there. <laughs> oh, my, I don't think my mum stopped smiling. <laughs> um, like every time I've called her, she's just sounded so happy and um, she's just so excited for me. And I don't think she can quite believe it either. So um, we've put in so much hard work over the past few years. Um, especially like me and my mum, like she used to take me to swimming all the time, uh, took me to all the competitions. She's had moments where I've left my passport at home and had to drive like to the airport to give it to me and then drive back home. So she's done so much for me and um, I just, I'm so grateful that like I've had her in my corner. My, my dad's as excited as well, so are my brothers. And um, yeah, I'm really hoping that I can have a great summer and make them all proud.